Everyone, I don't care if you love me or hate me, stand up for yourself. People are trying to bring me down, I stood up and look at me now, no one can bring me down anymore. Ever wondered what happens when you put together killer punches, crazy striking skills, and an unshakable mindset in the octagon? You get Alexander Volkanovsky. Alexander the Great Volkanovsky! This Australian MMA beast and kickboxer has the natural build of a bantamweight, but has made a career out of taking down lightweights and featherweights who, on paper, had better MMA records at the time. Currently, he's excelling in the UFC's featherweight division as the reigning champion and has also previously held the Australian Fighting Championship featherweight title. His mad skills in the octagon have made everyone pay attention, recognizing him as one of the top dogs in the game. So join us as we dive deep into the career of one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC today. Born on September 29, 1988, in Wollongong, New South Wales, Alex Volkanovsky got some diverse roots. His dad's from what's now North Macedonia, and his mom's from Greece. As a kid, Alex started training in Greco-Roman wrestling, and he was so good he won two national titles at just 12 years old. But at 14, he decided to switch things up and focused on rugby league, playing as a front rower. Rugby League made me who I am today. So they, this uh, you know, little powerhouse you see, this cardio sort of machine guy, even in the, on the footy field, I was the type of person that I would just run all day. Give me the ball and I would run. Imagine this. Alex Volkanovsky playing semi-pro rugby league for the Warilla Gorillas, absolutely dominating the field. I played for Warilla Gorillas. It was just where all my mates played, just where most of the people lived in that Warilla sort of region, and that's where all my schoolmates were. In 2010, he earned the prestigious Mick Cronin medal as the league's top player. But wait, there's more. He was a key player in Warilla's epic 2011 premiership winning season, snagging the Man of the Match award after leading his team to victory in the grand final against Garangong. And now the Man of the Match in the grand final for 2011. From the Warilla Lakes South Gorillas, their prop forward number 10, Alex Volkanovsky. Then, at 23, Alex made a bold move. He left rugby league behind to dive into the world of mixed martial arts. In the beginning, he stepped into the world of MMA as a way to stay fit during rugby's offseason. Little did he know that this decision would ignite a passion that would propel him to greatness. In no time, he mastered the skills of counter-striking and offensive wrestling, dropping his rugby weight and dominating amateur middleweight bouts before going pro in 2012. Starting off as a 170-pounder, Volkanovski won his first three fights, but faced a setback in his fourth match against Corey Nelson at Australian FC5 in May 2013. Despite the third-round TKO loss, the great didn't lose hope. He fought on, conquering the Oceania region's MMA scene, nabbing a Pacific Extreme Combat title and a pair of Australian Fighting Championship featherweight titles. With an awe-inspiring record of 13 wins and one loss, with 10 back-to-back -back wins, Volkanovski's journey to the UFC was inevitable. And so, in November 2016, the UFC came knocking. So we scheduled a match between Volkanovski and Yusuke Kasuya at UFC Fight Night 101. The first round showcased a thrilling ground battle, with Volkanovski giving Kasuya a taste of his knockout power. While Kasuya aimed for submissions, Volkanovski's game plan revolved around pounding his opponent with well-timed punches. Right, round two here, In the second round, he increased the intensity of his striking, landing a series of powerful right hands. This relentless assault led to a TKO stoppage at two minutes and six seconds of round two, securing Volkanovski's victory. In June 2017, the stage was set for Volkanovski to face Mizuto Hirota at UFC Fight Night 110. The battle commenced with Volkanovski nearly finishing Hirota in the opening minutes of the first round, as a powerful right hand sent Hirota to the canvas. 
Unyielding, Hirota managed to regain his composure and fight back. However, Hirota struggled to address the glaring vulnerabilities in his striking defense, leaving him susceptible to Volkanovsky's relentless attacks. The Great continued to apply pressure, skillfully blending takedowns and precise striking, forcing Hirota into a defensive stance. Despite a late rally attempt, Volkanovsky maintained control throughout the fight, securing a unanimous victory on the judges' scorecards. Volkanovsky's triumph marked his 12th consecutive win and his second UFC victory. For Hirota, it was his first loss since 2013. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live on FS1. Fast forward to November, and Volkanovsky found himself squaring off against Shane Young, who impressively stepped up with only a week's notice. Initially, Volkanovsky was scheduled to fight Jeremy Kennedy. However, Kennedy pulled out of the fight, citing a back injury, and was replaced by Umberto Bendenai. As the match drew closer, it was announced that Bendenai would postpone his UFC debut at this event due to undisclosed reasons and was replaced by Drek Zambanga. In turn, Zambanga pulled out of the fight due to visa issues and was ultimately replaced by promotional newcomer Shane Young. As the heaviest favorite on the card, Volkanovski didn't disappoint. He unleashed a 15-minute masterclass, battering Young and securing a commanding unanimous decision win. Destiny would later bring Volkanovski and Kennedy face-to-face -face in February 2018 at UFC 221. In the first round, Volkanovski successfully defended against Kennedy's takedown attempt, eventually taking him to the ground and initiating a ground-and-pound assault. Although Kennedy managed brief recoveries, Volkanovski's offensive strategy proved effective. In the second round, Volkanovski continued to assert his dominance. As the clock ticked away, referee Mark Goddard saw enough of Kennedy's bloodied state and called an end to the fight. And wanted me to face Kennedy, so, you know, we're both a threat to this division, and I showed why I'm the real threat. This impressive victory marked Volkanovski's 14th consecutive win, while Jeremy Kennedy experienced his first professional loss after an impressive 11 wins and zero losses start. I'm just too strong for these guys, and, you know, people say I should go to band and wait, but look, look, how, look what I'm doing to these uh, featherweights, you know, everyone says I'm small in this division, but um, I'm very strong in this division, so this is my division. And this is what I haven't lost around, and I'm, you know, I'm showing why I'm a big threat in this division. In July 2018, Volkanovski faced the seasoned and tenacious Darren Elkins. I'm, I'm gonna get in there, and I'm, I'm gonna take some damage, especially in the first round. I mean, I'm a slow starter. I'm not a very explosive fighter in the beginning. Despite Elkins's formidable reputation. Volkanovski's striking and grappling prowess proved too much to handle. Very dry. This could be his best chance to finish these out. Throughout the fight, Volkanovski connected with powerful strikes and scored key takedowns. Big nice right hand. Right. Elkins is down. Big right hand. Oh. Elkins is down. This might be Volkanovski. Ultimately clinching a unanimous decision victory and earning a performance of the night bonus. But oh, what do you do? Now, now it's my show. Now I want someone in the top five. He's an up-and-comer. He's trying to make a name. It's not going to happen, man. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to show these, these young guys it's a bad idea to call me out. The real excitement came in December when Volkanovski faced Chad Mendez in a heart-pounding clash. After an initial charge, Mendez was consistently back to the fence and sought takedowns and counters as Volkanovski took the initiative, smiling and welcoming more exchanges. <laughs> At some point, Mendez landed a crushing right hand that hurt Volkanovski. However, Volks absorbed Mendez's fiercest strikes and then, sensing his opponent's fatigue, struck back. Mendez is in big trouble. A crushing body shot followed by a right hand sent Mendez crashing to the canvas. This momentous win, which also claimed the Fight of the Night award, further elevated Volkanovski's status in the MMA world. Listen, he beat a real guy tonight, and um, yeah, beating him's a big deal. So he's in a very good position right now. Under the guidance of City Kickboxing, Tiger Muay Thai and his Australian team, Volkanovski was evolving into one of the UFC's top-tier strikers. While he began his career as a pressure fighter, he adapted his style against elite competition where simply pushing forward yields less success. 
Volkanovski's knockout power is undoubtedly his most significant asset, and it's no exaggeration to say he hits like a freight train. His striking prowess is a product of years spent training in boxing and kickboxing. One from the champ, Alex Volkanovski. Okay. Okay, here we go. Well, if you line it up, just gonna line it up. Oh! Fuck me, they're gonna swallow my tongue. You're gonna get that, Don't be fooled by his striking focus, though. Volkanovski is also a Brazilian jiu jitsu black belt under Joe Lopez, making him a well rounded mixed martial artist. This versatility means that facing Volkanovski is a daunting task, as he possesses a comprehensive skill set without obvious weaknesses, unlike some fighters from previous generations. Jose Aldo had to learn this the hard way when the two met at UFC 237 in May 2019. Aldo, arguably one of the greatest featherweights of all time, was expected to be Volkanovski's most difficult challenge yet. Aldo, you know what I mean? Jose Aldo, such a big fight, such a big name. He's a really important fight for me, and I uh, can't wait to go out there and do my thing. Though the fight began somewhat uneventfully, with Aldo controlling the center of the cage and Volkanovski employing feints and low kicks, the tide soon turned. Volkanovski's the one that's kind of doing a lot of the actions right now. Volkanovski's relentless pressure and cage control slowly chipped away at Aldo's defense, giving him the edge as the fight progressed. If you're Volkanovski, you're happy with that round. As the clock ticked away, Volkanovski's relentless pressure and cage control began to wear on Aldo. Aldo's coach said you can't sit on the fence. The Australian fighter's suffocating strategy against the fence stifled Aldo's offense and neutralized his notorious power. Mate, it was, a, it was very high level. You know, no one has done that to Aldo. No one has really stumped him and really shut him down like I did. You know, a lot of people probably don't understand the, the technique and the game planning and the preparation that went behind it. And, you know, literally he done pretty much everything we expected him to and we capitalized on it like we thought we'd do. In the end, Volkanovski's unyielding tactics earned him a unanimous decision. Nothing but respect, you're a legend. Thank you for that. This was a huge win for Volkanovski as it officially launched him into title contender status. Volkanovski's victory over Aldo earned him the opportunity to face featherweight champion Max Holloway at UFC 245 in Las Vegas on December 14th, 2019. Bless Express is on the move. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night. Christmas, New Year's, came early. You're welcome. You guys all know, you guys all work in the MMA business. There's a new face every two weeks. So whatever face, whatever cupcake, whatever mysterious flavor pops up, let me know. I want the first crack at it. Spent time away from the family. I ain't need to muck around, you know what I mean? I've got to bring that early Christmas present back to the fam. That's what I plan on doing. Again, yeah, nothing but respect. You know, he's a big boy. I'm a nice guy, right? So, you know, I can see he cuts a lot of weight, man. I'll make that decision easier for him by taking that belt and let him move up. He's a great champion, and once I take that belt, I plan to do the exact same. So, let's get it done. Bless their hands. The bout began with Holloway, known for his slow starts, conceding the first round to Volkanovski's strong opening performance. Holloway struggled to counter the Australian's relentless leg kicks, making it evident that Volkanovski had studied his opponent well. The second round saw more of the same, with Volkanovski's leg kicks forcing Holloway to switch to a southpaw stance. Though Holloway started to find his rhythm in the latter part of the round, Volkanovski's stick and move game plan effectively stifled the champion. 
Volkanovsky's persistent leg kicks continued to disrupt Holloway's attempts to establish a rhythm throughout the third round. The fourth round saw both fighters becoming more comfortable with exchanging blows, leading to some intense back and forth action. In the end, Volkanovsky's ability to disrupt Holloway's rhythm early in the fight, as well as his toughness in weathering Holloway's offensive surges, secured him a unanimous decision victory. Look, oh, I just want to say we've had great champions in this division. Aldo, great respectful champion. Max, great respectful champion. I promise to be a great champion too. And hey, I'm telling you, I'm going to stay champion for a long time. Australia, look at this. I'm bringing it This win marked the end of the blessed era in the featherweight division, snapping Holloway's impressive 13-fight winning streak. It is what it is, you know. I thought, uh, I thought I did enough, and we just see, you know. I don't want to sound like a sore loser. You know, only only three uh, only three opinions matter tonight, and uh, it didn't go my way. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna go sit down with my team. We're gonna watch the film, and uh, we'll get better. A rematch between Volkanovski and Holloway was swiftly arranged in July 2020. Everybody asks me, how does it feel coming in as a challenger? And uh, I don't feel. We're not trying to look too far ahead. We're not trying to look too far back. We got Alex. We got Alex. You know, I don't know. I don't know what spine true is mine or whatever, but. He get to see me come July 11, you know, first ever fight on Fight Island. I can't wait. Yeah. Keep boxing, keep boxing, keep boxing. Man, you know, it's a, uh, again, like, I, I, I think he's just quite uh, salty about the whole thing, to be honest. Um, it's quite surprising. I didn't think he would uh, be a bit of a sore loser, but that's, that's sort of my take on it. You know, obviously, I'm using it as motivation. Right from the get-go, it was clear Holloway had improved his spacing game to avoid Volkanovski's wicked leg kicks. In the initial two rounds, Holloway's strikes were more impactful, and he shot some critical blows that visibly frustrated Volkanovski. However, in the third round, Volkanovski adjusted his approach and began to work his way back into the fight, demonstrating his champion caliber resilience. Look at that, look at that, that's good work, Alex. The final round saw both fighters locked in a dance of precision and power. Holloway continued to pressure Volkanovski while the latter landed crucial leg kicks. In the end, the result was decided by the narrowest of margins, a split decision in favor of Volkanovski. Like I said, I wanted the finish. I know he went for the finish. Unfortunately, uh, we both didn't get it, but I got the decision. That's, that's all counts. The first title defense is in the books. Congratulations, man. Co-main event, obviously very, very close fight there as well. Um, did, were you scoring that one along? And did you have Volkanovski winning? Did you have Holloway? What'd you think? Listen, man, you can't leave it. You can't leave it to these guys. We got some bad judging. We got some bad judging, and uh, I, I don't know, has Max been in here yet? I'm sure he's no, devastated he's and, you know, yeah. Happy with the win, you know, to beat Max back to back, to back like that. That's saying something. I'm, I'm you know, happy to finish the chapter, you know, on to the next. On September 25th, 2021, the UFC 266 stage was set for a titanic clash between Volkanovski and Brian Ortega. No more words. Tomorrow, fuck the belt. I'm coming for your head. Facing a formidable challenger in Ortega, Volkanovski's resolve was tested in what some consider the best fight of 2021. From the opening bell, the first round teetered on a razor's edge. Volkanovski's agile in-and-out movement and devastating leg and body kicks were met with Ortega's well-timed jabs and skillful use of his reach to disrupt the champion's rhythm. The second round saw both fighters increasing their aggression, with Volkanovski often backing Ortega against the fence and landing significant strikes. The pivotal third round featured Ortega nearly securing victory with a guillotine choke. Yet, in a miraculous display of grit and determination, Volkanovski escaped the jaws of defeat not once but twice and answered with a punishing ground-and-pound assault that left Ortega reeling. As the fifth and final round unfolded, a bruised and battered Ortega mustered the strength to keep going, but the damage had already been done. 
This was Volkanovski's night. The champion skillfully navigated the last round, securing his place atop the division and proving once more why he wears the crown. He's got to be the number one pound for pound 145er ever. Beat Aldo, beat um, fucking Max, Max Holloway twice, beat Ortega. Who? He's got to be the greatest now. He's got to be. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up to the champion of the world, Alexander In the end, this unforgettable spectacle raised both fighters' profiles, but also cemented Volkanovski's reign with another successful title defense. The, uh, an unbelievable fight, you know, and, and to have a classic fight like that and still win basically every round on every card, I mean, uh, pretty pretty special accomplishment. So talk to you how you're feeling after a fight like that. Hey, it was a good fight, uh, fun fight. Uh, everyone enjoyed it, so I'm happy. In April 2022, Volkanovski faced off against the Korean zombie, Chen Sung Jong asserting his dominance with relentless leg kicks and crisp boxing. The Korean zombie struggled to find his footing as he was dropped and rocked multiple times in the opening three rounds. Before the start of round four, the referee Herb Dean called upon the cage-side physician to examine Jong's swollen, bleeding, and scraped condition. After a brief evaluation, the fight was allowed to continue. However, seconds into the fourth round, Volkanovski unleashed a brutal combination that left his opponent wobbling. And so Dean decided to stop the fight. With another victory under his belt, the stage was set for a highly anticipated rematch with Holloway. From the outset, the fighters' contrasting styles clashed. Volkanovski's timed power shots against Holloway's relentless volume striking. Despite Holloway's efforts, it was Volkanovski's precision and speed that proved too much to handle. Right now, Alexander Volkanovski is fighting a beautiful fight. The tide turned further in Volkanovski's favor midway through the second round when a well-timed counter right hand opened a deep gash above Holloway's left eye. That short shot opened up a big cut, or so it appears. The Hawaiian fighter's urgency increased, but the blood in Volkanovski's relentless assault hampered his chances of mounting a comeback. In the final round, Volkanovski continued dishing out punishment, showing no signs of slowing down, while Holloway's face bore the marks of a losing battle. He showed tremendous toughness, but this night belonged to Alexander Volkanovski. With this victory, Volkanovski not only cemented his status as champion of the featherweight division, but also claimed a third win over Holloway, putting an end to their highly disputed trilogy once and for all. The undisputed UFC featherweight champion moving up to lightweight to challenge for the title, Alexander the Great Volkanovski. After that, Volkanovski moved up to lightweight to face top contender Islam Makachev in February 2023. I'm, I meet uh, Volkanovski in the downstairs. He's a short guy. I'm, every, everyone, think, everyone thinks I'm short. And then I'm punching him in the face, and then next minute, you know, their face changes real quick when I'm in front of him. So, yeah, well, uh, again, that's uh, yeah, it's not, not insult. Whatever, yeah, I'm short. I know I am, but uh, man, I'm, the, I'm the champ. I'm doing good. And I'm going to keep this winning streak going, and I'm going to show him, uh, show him what short people can do. The featherweight king exceeded all expectations, landing 70 significant strikes against Islam, far beyond Charles Oliveira's previous record of 19. Additionally, Volkanovski delivered 164 total strikes and demonstrated remarkable defense against his opponent's renowned wrestling. Volkanovski appeared to have the upper hand in the first two rounds, using his strikes and takedowns to control Makachev. Although he performed extremely well and kept the fight close, Islam also had a lot of success in the striking and, as expected, had more ground control than Volkanovski. Ultimately, the judges awarded Makachev a unanimous decision win, but the result did not go uncontested. You could make an argument but you can't make an argument for the fifth round. The fifth round was clearly yeah. Volkanovski. How do you possibly have a fight that was supposed to be a one-sided ass kick and it ends up being a back and forth battle and you don't give it, you don't give it to Volkanovski? Uh, first off guys, um, I appreciate the support, but let's give a round of applause for Islam. Despite the controversy, Volkanovski remained professional, vowing to come back even stronger in his next fight. Volk, that was an incredible fight. I mean, that was the toughest fight of his career. Ha, and listen to this. Give me your thoughts. 
However, just a day after the controversial fight, Dan Hooker took to social media accusing Islam of cheating by using an illegal rehydration method before the bout. Hooker is maintaining that he has been told by a medical professional, in this case a nurse, that the nurse administered an IV to Islam after the weigh-ins and prior to the fight. There's some images that came out that showed Islam with a bruise on a part of his arm where a vein would be. Mm. Now, that bruise is a typical bruise for someone who has received an IV. You are not allowed to rehydrate with an IV. There's a two-year suspension for that. They look at it like performance-enhancing drugs because in a lot of ways it is. The thing is that IV drips of over 100 milliliters have been banned since the UFC partnered with USADA in 2015, though certain exceptions exist. Islam's co-manager, Rizvan Magomedov, swiftly denied the allegations. Even city kickboxing head coach Eugene Behrman, who was in Volkanovsky's corner during the fight, advised against making such accusations, pointing to uncertain and speculative sources. But hey, it was a, it was a fun fight, you know. Um, maybe I could have capitalized on some positions a bit more. Um, left it a little late, but hey, what do you do? Congrats uh, to Islam. To date, USADA and the UFC have not found any definitive evidence to substantiate the claims. So how has how's life been since Perth? Obviously, it was a mental weekend and... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm funny like that. I, to me, it's just uh, back home, uh, back, back to reality and me being dad and, and whatnot. But I mean, it was massive. It was a massive You weekend. girls ready? Yes. All right, who wants to count? Me. Okay, both of you count. Alexander Volkanovsky's incredible journey to the pinnacle of the UFC serves as a testament to the power of determination and skill in the world of mixed martial arts. With a record of 25 wins against just two losses, Volkanovsky's unwavering commitment to excellence in striking and grappling has enabled him to conquer the fiercest adversaries and inspire a generation of fighters who aspire to reach the same heights of greatness. His legacy stands as a powerful reminder that the human spirit, when fueled by unwavering determination and an insatiable hunger for greatness, can overcome even the most formidable challenges and reach the highest peaks of achievement. I'm, mate, I'm, not, mate, I'm a normal human being. I've said it time and time again. Just hard work got to me where I am. Anyone can do what I've done. Anyone. Sky's the limit for any of you.